Hello everyone and welcome to this unusual video, which is basically a chess analysis of my today's game against uh, Ruslan Vasilievich on the website witches.org. So my opponent Ruslan Vasilievich is uh, over 200 points higher rated than me. He's 1724, I'm um, 1510, which is average, pretty average rating. And he's like thinking probably, oh, so low rated oh, an enemy opponent player. So it will be easy win for me, easy points. Nothing farther from the truth. Truth hearts. I made sure he's gonna suffer. I made sure he's gonna struggle in this game. So to not prolong this beginning, let's just move to the game analysis. I'll be also using the Stockfish 10 engine, chess engine to help me analyze the game because I'm not a chess master. So I need a little help over here with the analysis. Here comes the a uh, classical opening of course from the king side pawn I'm not going to spend 10 hours to just talk about one pawn movement okay so I'm answering the same here comes all of the knights developing over here and it's basically the four knights game the four knights opening obviously we know why it's called like that because we've got four knights developed and then there goes the bishop on c4 I'm answering the same bishop c5 there it goes castles castles and here, this situation I will stop for a second, but you know, one move before, our position is very symmetrical. It is very symmetrical. And you can ask yourself a stupid question, what's going to happen if you would just repeat all over and over again the moves of your opponent? So the answer is, is very simple, your opponent, if, if he's white, uh, I'm not being racist, but if he's white, he has one move advantage over you. So he will dictate what happens and at some point you have to do something else. So he has a huge advantage over you and you can just endlessly repeat his moves. So our paths will have to go separate ways. But when it comes to openings and beginnings, uh, repeating moves is not so bad, not so stupid. You just need to remember that you can't endlessly repeat them. So here comes the suggestion that he should go here with the pawn, which is classical opening. There's been many games played that way. And the chess engine here says I should put my pawn over here, which is a good suggestion because we usually get this bishop attacking on g5, basically spinning the knight over here and attacking potentially attacking the queen, so I can't move my knight anyway uh, until I get rid of that bishop. Instead, I'm repeating the move here. I'm pushing my pawn as well. So what my opponent is doing, as the chess engine predicted, I mean, you know, as as I predicted, he, he suggested I should, the chess engine suggested that knight should go over here. I'm not sure why, but uh, not to uh, you know, just prolong the video. Here comes the bishop attack, pinning my knight, and following the move, I'm not really doing what the chess engine suggests. I'm not really moving my pawn again. And this is called inaccuracy here, based on the uh, stockfish. Shut up, stockfish, okay? I, I don't want to play, you know, like, if, if, if I would just repeat all of the moves of uh, people that already played the games, like, you know, before, or, you know, just, I'm playing what I think is best, okay? And here I'm creating lots of tension. My bishop is uh, here attacking that bishop. It's also more developed. It's uh has more squares under our control. So I was thinking that this is a good move. If that bishop takes my knight, I will simply exchange or with, with either the pawn or with the queen. So it's nothing really bad. Not nothing really terrible with that bishop over here. Well, the here it says that you know all of the top games with the next following move which is knight coming on d5 white wins always 100 percent win ratio just it's been two games top games of some good players but my opponent is not so smart he, he's not one of these and he's not going knight on d5 instead he's going the bishop on d5 so there's lots of tension it's, it's a very questionable move I'm not sure why he did that. I mean, he's trying to create more tension here, probably on my knight. His knight, his bishop's protected by that pawn, by that knight, and 
I'm just attacking his bishop pretty much with this bishop. One, two, uh, potentially this knight is attacking the bishop. But the issue here is that I can't move that knight because it's uh, pinned here by that bishop attacking my queen. So I need to get rid of that bishop, put my pawn over here as suggested before. And here goes the exchange. And this game has never been played before. It's already a totally, uh, a totally new game that's writing the history of chess. So there goes the exchange. I'm taking with the queen. He's not taking as the chess engine because he's pushing his knight over here. Idea behind that is simply to strike at that pawn. It's a free pawn, not protected by anything. No, no pieces protect that pawn and farthers the attack on the, on the rook. So I need to defend my pawn. I can do it by just two steps, pretty much three, four, four steps if you want to be picky. But uh, I can move as chances in discuss this bishop over here and protect the pawn. I didn't want to do it because that would basically put my bishop, uh, you know, away from the center. And here you can strike at this line over here. Uh, he's also protecting this uh, pawn if he needs to. And if I just move him over here, he's just retreating, which I did not like the idea. If I put my uh, cast, my, my rook over here to protect uh, that pawn, I'll just lose this pawn. It's obvious. I could probably move that rook over here, but uh, it's for now it's good if he stays near the king to protect him. And instead I'm just using my queen to move here and protect. It's a good step. So that's a mistake based on the stockfish. He should move his pawn just one square. He moves it two squares. Okay. I'm not exactly sure why it's a mistake, but you know, stockfish can calculate like 20 moves ahead and he knows what's going to happen. So the idea here is simple. He's trying to put his pawn on the same line of here. This, you know, these pawns lining them up. As pawns also protecting two pieces. It's a nice idea, but it's not very really good in this certain situation. So is the chess engine to guess? Nah, <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid here of the knight. I really do not like that knight. He's striking my my pawn, so I need to keep my queen to protect that pawn. And this knight is creating a mess here in the center. So he's, he's in a good place. He's in a pretty good place here strike in different places so i'm just trying to get rid of him and instead well he just decides to go over here retreat so that's better that's really better i would say for me and uh now following pretty simple here pushing my pushing my pawn the idea behind that is very simple i've got my rook here sitting and uh, I just want to open the file. So I'm pushing that pawn to attack that pawn, open the file and have my rook at full potential. What's following next is uh, exchange of the pieces. He takes the knight, I take the bishop. Some, some could say that these pawns here are weak because they are double stacked. That's kind of true, but on the other hand, you have to pay attention that this pawn is protecting, protecting these squares so he's blocking the white knight from jumping over here and causing a havoc and also on top of that i'm really opening a file for my rook over here so i've got the open file so this double sucking pawn is not so terrible as you could think it is but following farther he's pushing his pawn to attack creating tension here attacking my bishop as well in this situation i'm just simply exchanging pawns here is the exchange and well you can see that he just gave me a free pawn and I'll just take that. That's a free pawn here. The chess engine suggests that he takes that pawn because it's protected by this pawn and uh, so I can't really take it by the, with, with the rook. Instead he takes this pawn which chess engine says it's a huge mistake. And, well, he thinks that it's a nice idea because he can attack my queen. Not really, it's not the best move, but you know, not to not pro prolong this uh, 
simply moving my queen so uh, putting another knight into the play it's a bad move because he did not notice that you know here if he moves his knight away I'm just simply taking a free piece uh, not piece but a pawn so he would have to in this situation protect somewhat somewhat protect this knight well this knight is protected by that pawn so reason why he moved that knight I can't answer that that was a mistake huge mistake on his side so I'm just simply taking as the game engine suggests he needs to uh, do something in this situation because I've got my queen here on the side striking here I've got two bishops striking over here which is uh, really dangerous for him two bishops lined up white and black bishop and I've got my almost rook at full potential on almost open file so here I'm basically putting him at check needs to move away following unlocking the uh, pile for my queen and this is a very dangerous, dangerous situation for him because this is a checkmating square over here he's uh, his king is trapped he is trapped basically blocked by these two pawns over here he doesn't have the window a little window here that allows king like just like here to you know hide and retreat and escape from checks so he knows that and for some reason he just decides to you know take the pawn here it, there, there's a lonely not protected by anything hanging pawn he takes that so there's different things that the chess engine at this point suggests I should have done basically I uh, go here with the the you know because of the rook just trying to attack my bishop go here with the bishop then pretty much uh, go here check there will be some you know some exchanges and stuff and you know the game will be simplified but I, I'm not going to spend half an hour just talking about what the chess engine suggests it just this is just a simple idea you can probably analyze this game on your own I'm just going to analyze what I've done what I've done that and what my opponent has done so we're continuing on exchanging here taking his uh, piece he's taking that with the queen that's check and to retreat uh, hide and free it's a mistake I agree I should have moved on the black square because simply it's uh, followed here by that move with the queen he's putting his queen on the same line with the rook so basically now if he moves his rook here or if he moves his rook over here uh, there is a check and I need to retrieve my king somewhere and he takes my queen so there's an exchange rook for the queen which is bad for me I need to avoid that so I need to either move away with my king or put my pawn ahead to co to hide um, what I'm doing I'm just moving my king in the black spot the reason is simple because the uh, queen is striking and the white squares at the white diagonals and I have got black bishop it's on black diagonals so this is uh you know basically good for me to protect my my black fields and all of my pawns are on black fields so king here should be relatively safe that's why he's putting his knight in the attack uh, he's coming here with the plan of here going here check and uh, having forks on my king and my and my rook so I'm predicting that I'm defending that field he's uh, going farther with his uh, knight to attack my rook which is not the best idea but I get that I get that is after that he can follow with uh, taking the pawn and attacking the other rook it's, uh, it's one of the ways he can do that but instead I would allow him to do that and uh, the reason is it's very simple here by moving my rook over here I'm threatening him with a mate so simply next move that can follow is uh, if he goes this greedy person for that pawn and maybe even farther for the rook with that plan 
here's a queen one step checkmate so he needs to do something to prevent that what he's doing is uh, he's putting his knight over here attacking my rook and defending defending that pawn which is very important very crucial pawn so chess screams inaccuracy inaccuracy he should probably move his pawn so it's protected by another pawn that would be a better better move for him what follows next i'm putting my rook over here with the idea to basically pin pin his uh his knight and the rook he can't move his knight because there will be an exchange of the rooks i'm you know I would really gladly exchange the rooks to make the situation more simple. He's coming here as the chess entity to guess to attack my queen. I'm I'm grabbing a free pawn. Free pawn is a free pawn. Not complaining here. And again, he's still under the threat of this. He got this knight defending. That's fine. So he's uh, opening a window for his uh, king whatever reason the reason is here that he wants to attack my rook to you know scare it make it go away that's that's okay that's okay really i'm i'm just moving away and what follows next is it's terrible it's really terrible guys don't do this so what follows here is uh move over here with the rook He's trying to attack me. This is the situation that I've got a better advantage over him because I'm really heavily attacking his cornered king. And you could think that my king is also here cornered. It's weak. It, it's not far from the truth. But, uh, well, the idea here is simple. He wants to protect this square so he can go with the knight check i'll have to move away here or here obviously here because uh there is a queen that's uh attacking this square as well i can't take the knight obviously with the rook because that would be an exchange not in my favor so instead what i'm doing is uh, very simple i'm just you know preventing check moving my king what follows next that's a terrible terrible move over their body he's pushing his uh, pawn over here protected by this pawn kind of blocking pile from my rook I get that I get this idea but this just allows me to uh, develop my second rook my second rook is an open file striking at that uh, knight. Of course, I'm not going for an exit. It's, it's protected by the rook. But uh, what happens next? It's a blunder. Here. He moves his knight over here. With whatever reason he, he does that. With some idea of exchanging crooks, maybe? Like... Uh, you can see here, you know, these rooks are on exchanging lanes. There is the queen protecting that rook. Chess engine screams, I should, you know, go here for an exchange. Yeah, take that, take that, and then I take that rook. But, you know, instead of doing that, I'm just simply uh, first, I'm, I'm cramming a free rook. He hanged his rook over here. Uh, by, because if you look back, this knight over here was protecting that rook, so I would not take it at any, at any given situation. And But given that, I'm grabbing the free rook. He's taking my rook, I'm taking the rook of the king. And what follows next? Just a check, destruction. You should look at the situation given here. I'm running extremely low on the time. It's 27 seconds for me. Uh, farther on it's 41 seconds 41 and you know I'm I'm running pretty much just below one minute so he has five seven minutes it's uh he's much more time to think I'm really running low on time I need to think super fast what to do but I'm in a much better situation now so I need I can make faster moves here's check I'm just uh, going away 
here's uh attack on my on my queen and this is what made him lose it, it was already a lost game for him that's true that's true but uh at this point even stockfish screams three moves buddy three moves you're three moves away at best from checkmate so what follows here is a check you can prolong his life with just covering his, his king by with the queen he's not doing that he's just coming here and uh, this is pre basically protected by the bishop queen can attack here and it's checkmate so this is the game basically I'll, I'll make the window a bit smaller you can see what the chess engine thinks it thinks that we're terrible players um, on his side, five inaccuracies, seven mistakes, three blunders, hundred average centipone loss. On my side, three inaccuracies, five mistakes, two blunders, seventy-three average centipone loss. Well, I've done two blunders. It it basically was telling me that I could probably finish the game faster, um, do some more exchanges and stuff like that whatever I'm, I'm, I'm victorious after all i won the match and uh, i'm happy the way i played so i really thought it's a, it's a gate it's a great game i ended up with uh, 56 seconds on my clock hit over five minutes he could take more time thinking on better moves that would really probably improve his situation in this game because the last few blunders he committed made him simply lose so thanks Ram for watching, uh, let me know what do you think about this game. Um, it's it's not really one of these games that you just check on the book and they're like, you know, just same 20 moves uh, repeated over and over and over in the history of chess because like all of the chess students, they just open the book and they like study, okay, this is the best move, this is the best move, this is the best, this is what follows here, here and like they learn by heart like the the, all of the openings, the the first 15, 20 moves from the history, from archives, from the games that happened in the past here. You've got a human playing as a human and we're just playing as we think is best. We're not really learning by heart how to play. So let me know guys what do you think about this. A bit unusual chess video because just getting a bit of background history. I've stopped, I, I've just returned you know, to playing chess actively now. I'm, I'm an average player, uh, but you know, I've, I've learned how to play chess at the age of five, seven, maybe years old. And uh, I've been playing pretty actively for a very long time. Mm, I really haven't played chess much in the elementary school, that's true. But you know, later on I, I joined a chess club, we've been on some tournaments, we've won a couple of tournaments, uh, mostly team team games, uh, four, four players against four players. And uh, I pretty much stopped playing chess in 2012-2013. And now, well, I play it sometimes from time to time, you know, during my uh, studies at the university with some of the friends but nothing really serious and now i think i actually you know found the joy again to play chess so this is the reason why i've made this video and this is the reason why i came back to playing thanks everyone for watching stay tuned for more chess videos if you like 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 the video comment and let me know if you if you like it if lots of people like the video i'll make more of them so stay tuned.